friends and artists, Mrs. Gordon here. Um, we are continuing our lessons with Impressionist and Post-Impressionist art today. We learned about how Impressionist art took a change from being very realistic and trying not to uh, show any brush strokes and to kind of be like a photograph and how Impressionist artists like Claude Monet and uh, Mary Cassatt really tried. Bus number 31 is dismissed to the lobby. Bus number 31 to the lobby. 31. <laughs> really tried to give an impression of what it felt like to be there. And they did this by not being as worried about being perfect, by using color in a new and bold way, like Claude Monet did. Wow, right? And Mary Cassatt. We made hats by Mary Cassatt. We made teacups by Mary Cassatt. Um, and today, friends, we're going to start learning about post-impressionist art. So post-impressionist art um, came, it was a period right after the Impressionists. And they kind of took, these artists took what the Impressionists had done and they like expanded upon it. They made their colors bolder. They made their brush strokes more visible. They really tried to emphasize geometric shapes. Um, and the word post means after, the prefix post. And so post impressions means after the impressions. And they took everything that the impressionists were did and just like <sighs> blew it out of the water and really tried to make it amazing. So the post impressionists were artists of the late 19th century who saw the work of the French impressionist painters and were influenced by them. Their art styles grew out of that style called impressionism. So the word post means after. So post-impressionist painting came after impressionist painting. These artists developed impressionism but rejected its limitations. They continued using real life subject matter with vivid colors. That means really bright and powerful colors, um, often with thick paint. However, they added other ideas like using geometric forms and distorting the form for effect and using unnatural colors are some of their ways. So one of the most famous painters and definitely most famous um, post-impressionist painters is Vincent Van Gogh. And you probably know Vincent Van Gogh for his uh, amazing Starry Night. And um, you can see here that he's even made the brush strokes even more visible than Claude Monet and Mary Cassatt. He um, added colors to the sky that not, might not really be there. Um, but he gave the feeling of it. So you can see the wind blowing and you can feel like what it might have felt like to stand there on that hill and look down on that town with a tree right here and to really feel that wind rushing by and to see the stars, the brightness of the stars in the sky. And he tried to give you that feeling of it, just like the Impressionists did, but in a bolder, more dramatic way. Um, and the same that he did with his, this is probably one of my favorite paintings, um, uh, Crows in a Wheat Field. And look at the brush strokes. Again, one of the things that we see, are seeing with the, both the Impressionists and Post-Impressionists is the blending of colors. So instead of making the wheat field just yellow, he used all different kinds of yellows and browns. Um, he made the skies all different kinds of blues. And we're going to continue doing that today with our drawing. We see this in his sunflowers, one of which you can see at the Philadelphia Art Museum. I don't know which one it is. I feel like it might be this one. Or maybe it's this one that you can see at the Philadelphia Art Museum. It is something to see. When you are allowed to go to museums again, I highly recommend going and seeing it in person. But today, friends, we're going to be learning about um, Mr. Vincent Van Gogh and what he did um, when he painted his bedroom in Arles. So he was working in Paris, and he decided he wanted to create a studio in the south of France, like a southern studio, he called it, for artists to come down and paint. He felt like the light was better there and more magical, um, and he wanted to do that. Now, he created, this is his bedroom of the yellow house that he lived in when he was in Arles in the south of France. And you can see that you can almost feel like you're in this room, but again, we're seeing the mixed colors we're seeing the colors mixing, the yellows and the grays of the bed. Um, we're seeing a little bit, learning a little bit more information about him. He's put some of his paintings on the wall. 
this window, um, and you get really in the bold use of color that he made in this room. So we're going to be creating a room inspired by Mr. Vincent Van Gogh today. And let's see here. We're going to be drawing it and then using some of the bold colors um, that we might want to. Now, you have a couple of choices with this room. You can draw your bedroom the way it is, or you can draw your bedroom the way you want it to be. Um, you're going to need paper. You're going to need something small and rectangular like a book, or I even have this palette of paint that I use that works really well. So something um, kind of a small rectangle. You're going to need a pencil, um, and you're going to need some crayons to mix colors and add color to your work. Um, so, friends, here is my example that I have done for this drawing. And, oh, goodness, everything's falling apart. We're live. We're in real, real time here, friends. Um, so what we're going to see here is we're going to learn how to draw a three-dimensional bedroom. We'll start with the basics, um, and then you're going to be coloring it in. Um, remember, mixing colors like in your rugs, mixing colors in your floor, mixing even colors in your wall to create the feeling. We're going to add some furniture to your room. Is it okay if it's not perfect? A hundred percent. Because Vincent Van Gogh's bedroom wasn't drawn a hundred percent perfectly. And that's still amazing, fabulous art. So let's get started. So what you're going to need to do with your small rectangle is this is going to be like your back wall. So you're going to position it on your paper. So it's lined up with the top of the paper. And then you're going to trace around it. So like I said, you could use a book for that. Okay. So that's going to be the back wall of your room. That's the back wall of the room. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take diagonal lines. I don't even have to worry about them being perfect because that's the wonderful thing about um, the Impressionist. I'm just going to square off these corners a little bit. Um, and I'm going to take diagonal lines out to the left edge of my paper and to the right edge of my paper. And that's going to be, all of a sudden now, we have a room. These are where your wall, this line is where your wall meets your floor. So let's add, start adding some details to um, our room. Let's uh, add, we can add, we can add picture frames, we can add a window, we can add furniture. The furniture is probably going to be the hardest thing to draw, so let's start with that. So when I drew this bedroom, um, I drew a bed, and I'm all kind of just using rectangles. I started off with the back of my bed, and I just want to make sure that it's underneath my line where my floor meets my wall, and I'm just going to draw kind of a rectangle for the back end of my bed. And then I'm going to draw another rectangle. Um, if I find the middle of my rectangle and go down a little bit, I'm just going to draw another rectangle. And maybe this part is shorter. Okay, so that's the head of my bed and the foot of my bed. I'm going to go ahead and connect the bottom of my bed. And then I'm going to connect where I think like my mattress might be. I'm just drawing it down to, um, I'm in the middle of filming. Uh, thanks, friends. And I draw it down, and then I'm going to add my mattress. So I'm another diagonal line, and I'm going to take it across and draw it down to the edge. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase the first rectangle, the diagonal line I did. And you can pause the video at any time, friends. Let's see, I'm going to erase so I can just see my mattress, the top of my mattress. I'm going to erase these lines in the middle. Um, so right now I have kind of, you know, like a pretty decent bed. It's got a straight end and a narrow end. If I wanted to make it more details like a regular bed, maybe I'm going to carve some legs out. So now I have legs on my bed. And I'm going to carve some legs out here. 
And maybe I want to add something onto my bed, like maybe I want to add some details, like a little decorative element on my bed. I could add a pillow onto my bed. I'm just going to draw a little oval right here. And then a line out, line down, line over. Erase the line behind my pillow. And I'm going to draw a little sheet on my bed. Line going across the bed and then down off the edge. And then maybe I'll bring it down here. And I'll erase this line. So there I have a little sheet on my bed. So just like that, um, I have a bed. And you, you, friends, can pause the video at any time. Now we're going to repeat that same process to make a, like a little nightstand. So I'm going to draw a rectangle for the back of the nightstand. I'm going to make sure that it's underneath my line for the floor. Now on this one, I'm going to draw the front of the nightstand a little bit bigger. But I'm going to draw a rectangle a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to connect the corners. Now this was kind of off to the side. This is going to look, we're going to not see the back legs of it. So there's my little box bedside table. I can keep it as a box, but if I draw a line going across, I can carve out some legs. Line going across, line down, and then I'm going to erase that line in the middle. I can add a little drawer to it with a rectangle. I can add a little pole, like maybe a little circle. Maybe I want to add a little lamp to it. A little lampshade. Okay, and just like that, I have um, a bed, a bedside table. I've got a wall, a wall, a wall. Maybe I want to add a desk over here on this wall. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Make sure it's underneath where the line where your wall meets your floor. Otherwise, it'll look like it's floating in air. And then a little further down the wall, I'm going to draw another rectangle. And then I'm going to connect. This is going to be the top of my desk. Here's the side of my desk. If I want to make, like right now, it just kind of looks like one of those Ikea desks. But I can make the top solid just by following those same lines. I can make this have legs instead of a solid side. Just erasing what the construction lines on the inside. And just like that, now I have a desk. I can add a little drawer to the front of it if I want. I can add some papers on it. I can add a little, I think this is going to be like my little artist desk. So I can add some paint brushes or some pencils. And there's my little artist desk. Maybe add a little circle to pull it open and closed. Um, the chair I'm going to say is probably the hardest thing, but it's not that much harder. Hard, it's not that much harder than what you've done before. So I'm going to put a little rectangle where I want the bottom of my chair to be, and then I'm going to draw another little rectangle kind of behind it. So from the middle of it, behind it, it's okay if it's not perfect. I'm going to connect my corners. It, that's going to be the seat of my chair. This is a tall chair. That's okay. Maybe I can make it a little shorter. So I'm going to give it some legs. And I'm making it a little bit shorter than it was. I'm going to add the like rungs on the bottom of the chair. Just kind of draw those in. Now, it's just a stool right now, but I can add a back to it with two skinny rectangles. I can add some slats to the back. 
And now, friends, I have a chair and a desk and a bedside table and a bed. Okay, maybe you want to add some paintings on the wall. To make paintings, you would just draw two vertical lines side by side and then connect them with a diagonal line. Two vertical lines, connect with a diagonal line. Oh, that one looks weird, but that's okay, 100%. Maybe I want to make it a little bit more like this. So if it looks weird to you, you can change it. If, if it looks weird to you, you can keep it. On the wall behind the bed, it's just going to be a rectangle. I can add another rectangle inside to make it look like a picture frame. I can do the same thing over here. I can add a little post-it board over here. A little rectangle inside that kind of matches it. I can add some little piece of paper stuck up with some pins. You can make your room look like whatever you want it to look like. It doesn't have to look like my room. Um, my favorite part of doing this was adding a window. So I'm going to add, before I added kind of a narrow window, and now I think I'm going to add a wider window. But it doesn't really look like a window yet, so I'm going to draw another little rectangle inside of it so it feels like the thickness of the wall. I can add some diagonal lines to connect it. And now it looks like I'm looking out into something. And if you draw, you know, some landscape, a little landscape out there, or maybe add some shutters on the inside, right? Not shutters, but window panes. That's what they're called. Or you can keep it open like this. Okay, so you can kind of see where the windows might open. Friends and artists, um, play around with it, have some fun with it, try your different angles. Anything on the back wall is going to be vertical and horizontal. Um, anything on the side walls are going to be diagonals. And if, remember, if it doesn't look right, if you're like, wow, that painting doesn't look right, you can either keep it that way or you can change the angle. We'll talk about one point perspective later, but I loved that Mr. Um, Vincent Van Gogh's room wasn't perfect and yours doesn't have to either. After you get it drawn the way you like it, I might even add a rug. So for a rug, I can just add a horizontal line and then diagonal lines down to the edge of the paper. And that'll look like a rug that I could decorate with it. Add details to your paintings. Add, um, you know, add, you might want to add a detail to your rug. When you're done with the drawing of it, you definitely want to add color. Remember, uh, the Impressionists really tried to give um, the feeling, and one of the ways they did that was mixing colors. So mix colors, and don't worry about being perfect with your coloring. That's the most fun thing about the Impressionists and the Post-Impressionists, is you can do messy coloring um, to color your painting or to color your, your room in. So friends and artists, I hope you've enjoyed learning how to draw a room inspired by Mr. Vincent Van Gogh. I can't wait to see what you do with it. Happy art making, friends.